How's everyone doing today? How many of you can guess what we teach here in the School of Fire Protection and Safety at Oklahoma State? <laughs> I need some answers. Fire safety? Fire suppression? That's all true. <laughs> Most people think that we teach firefighting, and we don't. We don't. Matter of fact, we don't teach firefighting at all. It's really hard to overcome that perception when the first name of your academic department is fire. About three years, four years ago, I went down to Houston to talk to a guy named Jerry Winchester about some ideas that I had and some things I wanted to do. And together, he helped me make a plan. And here we are. We teach the practical engineering aspects of fire protection, occupational safety, and human exposure science. We keep you and those you love safe, even as, even as you sit here today watching this presentation. The beauty of this is that if we're doing our jobs well, you'll never know we exist. And that's not a good thing. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to us. We strive to prevent all fires and accidents, but sometimes we are fooled by randomness. Here, termites forage randomly, and the food was randomly placed. But we're going to demonstrate how random action by the termites leads to self-organization in a pattern that we all recognize. Does this remind you of anything? How about population shifts or animal-mediated seed dispersal? Now, that's a tongue twister. Let's explore how random lightning strikes create patterns. At the bottom, we see the development of a power law curve, which defines the probability of a cascade event, or an event, an event that spreads like an epidemic. The y-axis is probability of a fire, and the x-axis is percentage of the forest burned, or consequence. Forest fires spread like epidemics. Interestingly enough, this uh, pattern that we have here at the bottom has no average. Now we will build on the concepts of power laws and epidemics to determine the probable maximum loss of a random failure in the Los Angeles power distribution network. Probable maximum loss is a worst case estimate of loss or consequence. Insurance companies are very concerned with this. So are we. We learned that to prevent this network from a high risk failure, we have to protect these three hubs. By defining this and, and identifying where the pro probable maximum loss could occur, we can identify where reducing the risk will have the greatest impact. We analyzed the entire U.S. crude oil distribution network. What we learned might surprise you. A catastrophic failure of this system can be caused by the failure of a single hub. And this hub is located a mere 31 miles from here. Should we be concerned with the resilience of the crude oil infrastructure? You bet we should. Because the ability to deliver crude oil affects everything we do in our daily life. And the inability to deliver crude will result in an epidemic that affects all other critical sectors that allows us, us to live. In addition to identifying the critical hubs in the national network, we found that the West Coast is quite vulnerable to cascade failure. This fat tail translates to tremendous probable maximum loss risk in the West Coast system. This shows that if we want to reduce the risk of a cascade failure or an epidemic failure, we concentrate on the West Coast instead of the national network, which has a much lower risk. A surprising finding was that the addition of the Keystone XL pipeline, which will um, start in Alberta, Canada, and run down to Steel City, Kansas, reduces the risk of a cascade failure in the national system. If you notice, the tail tapers down quicker with the addition of the Keystone XL pipeline. This translates to a thinner tail and hence a lower risk. At the highest consequence, the addition of the Keystone XL pipeline reduces the probable maximum loss by a whopping 55%. Now, that's a big bang for the buck. 
Now let's discuss the recent BP incident in the Gulf of Mexico. We evaluated the human factors associated with this disaster, the factors that caused this disaster, and found that 79% of the errors were made at some time in the past and manifested during the explosion. 21% of the errors were made in real time. Remember how we showed that randomness can lead to self-organization? What can we learn from this? Organizations themselves, individuals, and randomness are the root causes of many disasters. By understanding this, we can reduce both the probability of a disaster occurring and the consequences when a disaster does occur. And this is exactly what we teach our students at OSU. In addition to preventing catastrophes and protecting human life, the School of Fire Protection and Safety was recognized as a national treasure by the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities for protecting artistic and cultural treasures throughout the world. And Tibun, we do this for natural gas and wind power systems, too. This is a small sampling of where our graduates work. This map represents the 114 countries where School of Fire Protection and Safety alumni strive to keep the world safe. And this is how the School of Fire Protection and Safety is transforming America's brightest orange into the world's brightest orange. Thank you.